We would like to acknowledge the land of the Kukuyuanji people, where we completed our data collection, as well as the land of the Jirbal people, where we analyzed our samples, and the Bundabara Yidi region, where we gather today. We pay respects to elders past, present, and emerging. From ice cream shops and swimming holes to boardwalks and bird watching, the Dane Tree is the place to be. Known as a World Heritage Area for its natural beauty and high amount of species living in the region, the World Heritage Area of the Dane Tree Rainforest is a beautiful place to spend a day, a week, or a year. We decided to go there for our research project, kind of in the hopes of seeing a cassowary, but more in the hopes of seeing bryophytes. Bryophytes are small flowerless plants that tend to include the mosses and the liverworts that we are talking about in this study. Mosses tend to have a more spiky look to them, while liverworts have a rounder and flatter leaf. In this study in particular, we are looking at bryophytes and how they live on palms and other trees within the rainforest. Because bryophytes tend to prefer a more textured bark, we hypothesize that there will be more bryophyte cover on these other trees due to the rougher bark that they provide in comparison to the very smooth tree of the palm. The main objective of our study is to better understand the factors that are influencing where bryophytes are choosing to live. Specifically, we are going to take a look at if bark texture might be that driving factor. To test this hypothesis, we went to the Dane tree, which gave us access to three different species of palms, namely the Alexandra, Black, and Fan palm. To collect our samples, we'd select one of these palms, or a similarly sized random non-palm tree, like the one here, and we would collect bryophytes from six different locations, at one of the heights of zero, half a meter, or a meter up on both the north and south side of the tree. To collect our samples, we would hold up a quadrat make a visual estimate of the percent cover of bryophytes, and scrape off all the bryophytes for identification later in the lab. We would also take some environmental readings, such as light, height, and direction, in order to see if any of these variables might be affecting the bryophyte cover. For our data analysis, we used a variety of different microscopes to be able to identify which bryophyte species was which. Because these bryophytes are so small and the differences in characteristics between them are so minute, we needed these microscopes to truly narrow down which characteristics belongs to which bryophyte. We then entered these characteristics into a taxonomic key and were able to identify which species was which. After we identified the species, we consulted other scientists to make sure that our findings were correct. After all of the species of bryophytes were identified, it was time for data analysis. We first learned that light and direction don't affect where bryophytes grow. Secondly, consider our hypothesis. We originally thought that random trees would have more bryophytes than palm trees because of the roughness of their bark. We found that that might not be the case. See this graph where the top line in red represents the number of species of bryophytes on Alexandra palms. The middle line, colored brown, represents the number of species on random trees. The bottom two lines represent the number of species on both black and fan palms. This means that Alexandra palms, on average, had more variety of bryophyte cover than random trees and more than the other palms sampled. These results are very surprising in the context of our hypothesis, where we expected the random non-palm trees to consistently host greater bryophyte communities than the palm trees. We actually see that this relationship is not clear-cut, with palm trees occasionally hosting more diverse or more abundant bryophytes than the random trees that we tested. This, along with the fact that we see differences between the palm trees themselves, specifically the Alexandra palm hosting greater bryophyte communities than the other two, despite having very similar bark textures, implies that bark texture is not actually the dominant factor determining where bryophytes will and will not live. Exactly what might be driving this is unknown, but it's likely some chemical aspect of the bark that we've not yet discovered, and more research is required to figure out exactly what that might be and how it might be affecting our bryophytes.